My name is Joe Styron. I'm at the Cleveland Clinic, and today we're going to go over the distal interphalangeal joint arthrodesis, or DIP fusion. So we're going to start by making a transverse incision over the DIP joint. And remember, this is going to be a full thickness incision because we don't need the extensor tendon once we fuse this joint. And so we want a nice full thickness incision down to the bone so that we can expose the joint. As we get the joint exposed here, sometimes releasing some of the collaterals, we can now appreciate the joint. Once we can see the joint, we can prepare the joint and then we'll use a double-ended guide wire in an anagrade fashion first, right through the base of the distal phalanx. You'll see the pin coming out the distal phalanx just beneath the nail plate there. And then you can check your alignment under fluoroscopy to make sure that you like the alignment. Once we like the alignment of the guide pin in the distal phalanx, as confirmed under the AP and lateral on fluoroscopy, we're going to want to position the guide pin so it's just barely coming out of the base of the distal phalanx. So then that way we can get our joint reduced how we like it, nice and straight. And then we can advance the guide pin across the DIP joint into the middle phalanx. Now we can again confirm under fluoroscopy that we like our pin position right down the middle on the lateral as well. Once you like your pin position, we can make a small transverse incision in the skin and then we're going to assess the depth gauge to identify the length of screw we're going to use. This is measuring a 44, which is obviously longer than what we need to accomplish this task. And so we will use a 30 millimeter screw, knowing that it will be fully buried within the distal and middle phalanges. Now using the cannulated drill, we can drill over the guide pin and the drill has markings on it to know the depth. So you wanna go through the distal phalanx, across the IP joint, and into the middle phalanx with the drill. This drilling can be done either by hand or on power. So once you have drilled to the appropriate depth across all of the courses, then we'll remove the drill. We'll place the 30 millimeter screw over the guide pin. And then I'm holding the distal phalanx joint reduced. Depending on the releases you had to do and the joint preparation, sometimes the distal phalanx can want to rotate with the screw as it engages. Uh, and so holding the distal phalanx upright so that you don't give the patient a rotated fingernail. And then we'll check the depth and position of the screw under fluoroscopy. So on the AP, what I like to see is that the screw is going right down the central part of the joint. It's nicely balanced. The joint is squarely aligned. And I can see that the tail is just beneath the distal phalanx courses. So then that way it will be buried. And as the patient is tapping their finger, then they won't feel the prominence of any hardware within their finger. On the lateral view, what I like to see is that the joint is nicely aligned, centered, and critically that the screw is buried within the distal phalanx and that there's a nice ridge on the uh, dorsal cortex indicating that the screw and the threads are completely buried within the bone uh, so that there's no irritation of the nail bed itself from the hardware. You see good fill in the canal of the middle phalanx as well as good fill within the uh, distal phalanx. So that way it'll be a nice robust fixation for this fusion.